Rabbi Nachman speaks about um, that there's a person has many many zivugim, um, and he speaks about how he can a person can attract them through shmirat the brit through being in the proper masculine energy and losing them by being in males being in feminine energy. Um, speak about how many speak about the concept of zivugim, which is matches. It, it, how many do people have? Is it is it is there is there ever a lost cause where you know you're you you know where there's what, what can a person do to attract one? Just go into that. I know that it's, it's also a very common question that we get here. I mean, it's it's a big question. That's that's a lot of a lot of. Uh, but there's there's according to Dari Darizal there's there's a general soul which is called like Adam Katman that's primordial being, and there are different parts of the body, and souls are linked to different parts of the body. So there's souls that are connected to the hand, for example, people that are kind and giving, souls that are connected to the brain, people souls that are connected to the heart. This is very general, and so there are souls. There's every soul has a masculine and a feminine soul. So there's your perfect zivuk, which that recalls your zivuk rishon, uh, which means your first zivuk, but it doesn't mean first in sequence. It could be you can marry your first in sequence like, as your tenth marriage. Hopefully oh, not. Wow. Yeah, it's not in sequence. So it's not the first one. No, it's the first in order, not a first in. Okay. First in spiritual order, not an actual. Breathe, uh, everybody, breathe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So your second marriage could be a. Your yeah, your zivuk rishon, of course. Yes. Yeah. First one could have just been a oops. No, not a oops. Not a oops. Okay. Not a oops. <laughs> Nothing's a oops. No, there are souls. Give people hope here. There are souls that are connected to us that come from the same area within the general soul of Adam, and those are souls that we feel attracted to. It doesn't necessarily mean it's a perfect zivug. It means that we needed to be with that particular person for a certain period of time. Oh, wow. Nothing's an oops. If Hashem put you with this person. And you were living with this person, even for a day, for a week, or however you live with this person, part of your tikkun was to be involved with this person for a certain period of time. And then, you know, you moved on, and then you have to find your perfect zivig, your zivig So that's that's the way it works. And so there's nothing there's nothing by accident. Everything that we encounter in this world is wow. is part of our part of our soul journey, part of our, our purpose of moving forward. Could have been a ten year lease. Yeah, we'll be ten years this. We'll be ten years this. You know, this is the same thing. Also, I mean, if you talk about people, but there's also sometimes forget about your spouse. There's certain times you were very close to someone when you were young, and then you lost touch, and and then you meet them, and you really have nothing in common any longer. Right. So that means that person was there in that time period where you were, or and it could be even objects. A person has a certain object in this world—a house, a car, or a certain thing, or a certain amount of money. These are things that we have in our life that are meant to be there while we have them. And part of letting go, part of being a spiritually evolved person is recognizing that these become toxic once they run out of the lease. Once the lease is up and you're still holding on to it, then it actually becomes toxic because it's something that you don't need anymore in your life. So instead of it being a process to get you a certain place, it becomes something that actually works against you. Wow. So that's 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 the process of, of letting go of letting go of those things. The way to attract, which is a, obviously this is a very important question. So forget about talking about people, for, but we'll talk about we'll talk about things. It's easier to talk about objects. So famously, the the Arizal writes, the Baal Shem Tov speaks about this in great length that Revim Gamsmeim Nafshem Bemtesatov that everything that we desire in this world, everything that we that the physical things that we have. Is connected to our soul. That our soul expands. It's not just in our body, it expands into the possessions and the people that we're connected to. So part of who you are is expanding or makif, you're like surrounding light expands into the objects and things that you're connected to. So there's a, a question from Hashlag asks. It's an interesting question. And he says, if if it's true, and it is, that the reason why these are objects that exist within our life, let's say a watch, you know. This is an object that exists in our life is because there's a soul connection and we have to have some type of elevation through that. And through that, the object itself also has some type of soul elevation. Why is it that we chase things and the things don't chase us? Wow. It's a good question. In other words, if let's say I say this person has to have a salary or make you know $250,000 a year. I don't know, let's say. 
And you'll say to yourself, but why do I have to chase that money if that money is meant for me? And I have a soul elevation through that money. Why am I chasing it? Why is he not chasing me? Because if they're both soul connection. And the answer is, is like a track record, essentially, which is when you receive things in this world, in this, in this life, not from a place of need, not from a place of lack, I must have that. And the reason why you receive it is just for selfish reasons that I want it. I need that salary. I need this watch. I need this person, whatever it is. I need that. And when you get it, you only serve yourself. And then almost you forget about the purpose of why you wanted it because of the soul elevation of that transaction. Over time, the sparks that are connected to your soul run away from you. Wow. So instead of it chasing you, it should be the natural way. Everything, everything that you, you need in this world, everything, your spouse, your, your Shalom Ba, everything that you need in this world should really be attracted to you. The reason why it's not attracted to you is because you were selfish previously and the things, the, the sparks and the senses are scared that you're going to take it and not elevate it. Wow. So the more, the more we chase things for own selfish reasons, the further it gets. Incredible. But the more we recognize that the things that we have in our life, the people, the objects, and the money, and everything that, that surrounds us is there to fulfill us in a, for our soul elevation, for a purpose of reaching up to a higher level of consciousness, to elevate ourselves, to elevate the things that we're encountering with, the more those things become attracted to us. So this is almost like counterintuitive, right? Because you're saying the less you feel the strong desire I must have it, the more it actually will be attracted to you. And I think that's a very important idea with all things in life with people, with finances, with, with Basharat, and all these things, what is your intention? What is your kavan of these things? Why do you want those things? Are you just selfish? Is that is a selfish reason? So then you're just, the, the sparks are going to run away from you. Wow. But the more you elevate yourself and you recognize that I'm doing this for a holier purpose, for a bigger purpose, and for a purpose of soul elevation, the more those sparks will be attracted to you.